Hello guys, Aloy Andalus from mbfx.com and Effective TDs. Today I will talk about the feature in 3ds Max 2019 that I like it most will be splines. We will talk about the splines. They introduced in 2018.2 or 1, I don't remember, uh, all these new splines and I have been using it in production at home and since I started working with it, going back it's so difficult because we can do so much more now with these splines. I think it's the most advanced splines on any 3D application. Let me know if you know there is some tools that I don't use for some time, but I think that they are really, really great. So let's start with the first one. The first one is a splines um, object. Let's create a freehand. You can now constrain to any object. Simply select constrain, pick an object. So now I can paint directly on this sphere. So simply start dragging around and as you can see I have this spline showing the normals you can show the nodes that it creates it's pretty cool you have multiple options here before that normally you create a line and you start creating tangents but maybe is not the best way let's say that you need to create a rope or cables in effects, I use a lot of lines to create this type of ropes, cables, or sometimes I simply need to uh, create a path so later on an object follow this path. And I always do it with lines because it's the only way to have knots where I want because you don't want too much knots, you want a specific knots in some places. But now with freehand, let's say that we will create a rope, something and you know exactly that it needs to go in a specific place let's say, I don't know, like that so I have all the uh, this rope created now maybe I would like to I do it this with a mouse so maybe some parts are, are kind of like not really like a rope, it's very angular we have the first tool that I will show you is the um, relax and it's called spline relax so spline relax you have iterations you have amount basically it relax the spline before we only was able to use the relax modifier but was not the same now really you can relax as much as you want to have something super nice you can show the nodes if you want to animate that, you can add a uh, edit a spline in top, and you can move nodes, but it's not the best ideal way to do it because you will be moving nodes, but you deform a lot the curve. We want to have this curve much more more simplified, so we have another great tool that it's called it's optimize a spline. So what? Optimize spline is doing it recalculating the spline to create the minimum number of nodes possible. So you can do by 10%, so start increasing that. And you can see that do an amazing job actually, it's super fast. Uh, it keeps the knot exactly on the corners that, that we want. You can do it also by a maximum number of, uh, amount. So you can say 6, 7, but sometimes you need to have a minimum number to keep the shape. So I like the 10%. So now this curve is way more simplified and now you can or create the spline, it will create an, an additional spline or simply create an edit spline in top and now it creates a tangent for you so you can move this in an easy way. Now if you want to animate this spline that's not a new feature but is something that I like a lot in 3D Max splines and I think that not so much people know is that the spline IK if you add a spline IK control it creates this modifier you can say no linking and create helpers automatically creates a helper on each vertex and automatically assign each vertex to the helper 
So now if you want to animate this, you can animate the, the, the helper. Let's make this more visible. So let's say that I want a keyframe there and I want a keyframe there. You have this spline animated. And it's a very easy way to animate splines. I love that. If you don't know about that, now you know it. I think it's it's pretty cool. I had to animate a lot of splines in real flow at, at work and and not being able to create automatically these helpers, you need to link one by one. And as well, it links the tangent, that, that, that's pretty cool. So if you rotate, the tangent move with it. Something that, I don't know, I know that real flow, you are not able to, to, to animate a tangent. In 3 Max, you can do it in an easy way. Let's see what more I like in splines. Let's say something else that I can show you. Let's delete now these control points. Let's say that we have these intersections and now let's take out this the spline. I cannot see the, the thickness of this spline. We don't have the options there. On edit a spline, we don't have as, as well the options that we had before on 3D Studio Max 2018-17. It's an additional modifier and that's good because since now we have so many options, create a spline. I don't know what I write. It's called renderable spline modifier. So now you can see it on the viewport. Here you have it. And you can have thickness and whatever you want. Now imagine that this is a rope, we can see very clearly that we have some intersections there, interpenetrations, and we don't want that. We have another tool for this. What we need to do first is create, um, normalize this spline, and that's another feather that it improved a lot. We had this before in 3ds Max 2017 and before, but it was really, really a simple tool, and I didn't like it so much. Let's see what it does. We can turn off renderable splines, show nodes. Basically, adds vertex. You can see it there, off and on. Adds vertex in different positions. You, you can do it by segment length. So basically reducing this, it will add a knot, making sure to have nodes to the same distance. Before, this value you can was not able to go under 1, I think, or 0 0.1. Now you can go as low as you want, uh, finally. But we have so much more options. Before, this was the only option that we have. We can keep the vertex on the original position. I think it's we retain nodes within. You can retain tangents, you have interpolations. You can, instead of uh, each length, you can insert nodes. It will insert nodes. And the good thing is weighted. So if the distance between these surfaces are bigger, it will add more or less nodes. Yeah, normalize. I think that now it's awesome. And I wanted to create normalize to show you that now we have spline overlap. And what this does is that if you increase the thickness, automatically the text, the intersections, and tries to, to avoid it. And it's awesome for simple ropes like that. Uh, we have something super cool in a few steps, and you don't need to go one by one checking where you need to increase these, these points. Something new as well on renderable splines, it's caps. Now we can quad them, so that's without quads, now it's with quads. We can increase segments, and we can verify these edges, so we can have nice endings, finally, for the ropes. Pretty cool, I think. 
And we have the twist correction that before we had some times the spline was getting a twist. Now this will fix it. We have with the splines, we have these mirrors. Basically, it creates a mirror on the spline. For better use, it should go below the renderable. Now we have these mirrors and we, you can add as much mirrors as you want and go on the axis that you want and you can create crazy things. Another cool thing that we can do is that we can morph uh, splines into other splines. So let's say that we have this Picasso that I did. We can say specify exactly the number of nodes that we want. Let's say that we want a number of nodes. Let's say, let's go with 150. If we want to do a morph, we need exactly the same number of nodes. We have 150. Let's add whatever text there. Let's have this T. Or let's do it with an X. I don't know what this will look like. We will morph this spline into this. I didn't prepare this at all, so I don't know what we will have. We can simply drag and drop this uh, normalized spline into this one. We have exactly the same number of nodes. So if we want to morph this into this, we need a uh, morpher. Uh, spline morph. Let's select our target that will be this X and let's see what it does. Hide selection. We have a progressive so we can go from 0 to 100 and it does this. Ah, uh, fair enough happening from this line to our X and can be interesting for a lot of things when we want to morph stuff. So more stuff. We can show nodes. Let's say that we want to apply a noise over this spline. We can do that. Noise. Let's make this visible. But we don't want to apply this to all the spline, only to one part of the spline. We can do it in a different ways. We can add an edit poly and do it. But now we have effectors, and effectors is a pretty cool thing. We can create it. Helpers. Influencers. An influence, basically, is this ball. You have two radius, and here are radius. I have the tool. Um, Radius Effector. You can download on my webpage uh, for TP and basically I have this. You have the inner radius that it means totally select Oops. and the other radius that means zero. And you can have different fall off curve. So now interesting things. By default this is not doing anything. But now we can add a spline influence and add this below the noise. Let's turn it off to see what we are doing. You need to add your influence helpers here. Will be this one. Turn the show nodes. And we can see that moving that, we are selecting um, vertex independently. And we was not able to do that before. And it's pretty cool. So we can select this independently. And we, you can control, so you can have multiple ones of this. Let's say I want to add another one there. I can select these two. You can select as well other helpers, like uh, point helpers or any object, and it will use these parameters here. And you can add, multiply, and as well, if you have a selection, you can uh, do it from the selection below you had. So it's pretty powerful. And now if we activate the noise, we are only affecting the selected part. Very interesting for motion graphics or whatever you need. Then you can animate this. I hope that you can see these splines. 
I can add in top. We say that we had renderable spline. So, yep. Very nice. Another very cool thing that is not is related to splines as well. If not, I will not talk about that. Is that we have a new path deforming, and it's awesome. Uh, if you work before with path deform in 3ds Max, we had problems because uh, so when you had an object and you was applying a path deform, the spline was moving to the local space of your object. You never wanted that at all but it was always happening, so you had to realign your object to the new spline, it was awful. Uh, you had to use the path deform wall space, then it was moving to the good place, but the thing being wall space was that you cannot apply the formers on top of them or accumulate path deform operators, so I really didn't like it so much, but See what they did now, it's awesome. So we want to apply this over this thing. We need even to be more thin. Let's delete this renderable spline, we don't need it. We will apply this over this element. So let's add a path deform. Path deform. Not the wall space, I think that you will not need this anymore. Path deform is all what you need. If you open an older uh, 3ds Max file with the old path deform because it has the same name and it's overriding it because basically it's way better than before. If you open an older file, it will open with the old path deform. So you will keep everything, but you don't want to work anymore with the path deform when you, you play with this. Let's select the spline that we want. So it's moving actually over the spline. Let's just stretch it. Yeah, it's following the spline already. You see, I am on the beginning of the spline, so the only thing is that this is... I can increase the stretch. And that's awesome, if you need more detail, because we are stretching it, simply go to Turbo Smooth, we can keep all this procedural. And we have more stuff on path deform, we can... You have a lot of options, you will see that we have if you have multiple shapes, you can. if you have a text, this uh, object can jump from letter to letter to say something. You have options for rotation and scale over the spline. We have offsets, we have a twist. Let's add a twist. We will need to increase this a lot. So we have a, a nice rope there. Yeah, that's all the different new splines that we have on 3ds Max 2019. You have this since 2018.2 or 1, I think. Let me know which one do you prefer. I think I am in love with the um, optimized spline, really good. I use it a lot when you receive like a bad cat data that comes with a spline with multiple vertex or something that comes from Illustrator. You can clean it in a very easy way. I didn't found this on any other 3D app application. It's awesome. The normalize as well, it's very good. We had, if you know effective TDs, I hope that you know, uh, check it out. We have different tools in sale. Um, we had Razor. Razor is to cut geometry, and we had to use a normalize spline because basically Razor creates a spline that you draw convert it into a poly and cuts different objects, but we need to normalize this spline. And before 3ds Max 2018.5.2, uh, I am confused, so basically 2019, um, normalize was really bad. We, you have no options at all. You was not able to go under one, so we had to write our own normalize. But now, with the normalize that comes in 3ds Max 2019, uh, I don't need anything else. Let me know which spline do you like more. Let me know if you use any of these tools already in production, in motion graphics, in FX. I use it personally a lot in FX. 
And that's all. I hope that you like this. It's not even a tutorial. It was a go through, but I think that there is some tools that can be not visible and people can forget they are there or even not know that they are there. So let me know. Thank you so much and see you soon.